Hello, today I'm going to be taking a look at a brand new air cooler from Cooler Master. It's part of their Master Air Series, the MA612 Stealth ARGB. And in this video, I'm going to be unboxing the cooler, giving you a look at the main features. I'll then show you how to install it, and then I'll run some thermal testing and let you know if it's any good. So taking a closer look at the cooler, I think the first thing we can see is on the top of the cooler we've got a very attractive aluminium plate with the Cooler Master logo. So if we look at the cooler itself we'll see there's six heat pipes which should give us some great cooling. And you'll notice they are asymmetrical which Cooler Master say should provide 100% RAM compatibility on various motherboard platforms. The plate on the bottom of the cooler is made from mirror polished nickel plated copper. The cooler comes with dual sickle flow 120mm ARGB fans. Looking at the fan on the rear of the cooler, your first thoughts might be that they've actually mounted the fan the wrong way round. But if you actually look closely, you'll notice the fan blades have been reversed. So although the front of the fan is going to be facing the back of your case, it's actually going to exhaust air. So the fans are on the heatsink in a push-pull configuration, and this fan is going to be pulling hot air from the heatsink out the back of your case. And I do really like this idea of reversing the fan blades. I know more and more manufacturers are starting to do this because it really improves the aesthetics of your build. If your motherboard doesn't have an addressable ARGB header, that's not a problem. Cooler Master include a mini controller with the cooler. So the first thing for us to do is to go ahead and assemble our back plate. And you're going to get this together with all the other accessories in a box with the cooler. Now in there you'll get all the hardware to install your cooler on a whole variety of AMD and Intel motherboards. I'm going to be installing this on an AMD motherboard which has an AM4 socket. So if you've got a different motherboard you might need to change some of these steps. But Cooler Master have good videos online and there's good instructions that come with the cooler. Okay so I've got our back plate with the AMD logo facing up the way. On the other side it says Intel. So AMD is facing up and all I want to do is drop these little metal standoffs through these larger holes. Once I've got things in place all I want to do is put one of these covers over the top and then push it into place and that then is going to lock our standoff into position. So we just need to do the same with the other three corners. The next thing for us to do is to remove our motherboard's standard mounting brackets. Each bracket's held on with two screws. Next, if we go ahead and lift the motherboard up and out of the way, we'll be able to get rid of our stock back plate. Importantly, you don't lose any of these items. The best place to keep them is in your motherboard box because if you want to change your cooler in the future or sell your motherboard, you're going to need these. The next thing for us to do is to go ahead and just set our back plate through the back of the motherboard. Now if you have any difficulty lining things up, these little standoffs are adjustable. You can just pull them from side to side into a position that gets them to fit. Next we're going to want to screw on one of these spacers onto each corner. Then we've got these little brackets which need to go on. If you look at the holes in each end, there's actually two holes. For an AM4 motherboard, we're going to want to go through the hole closest to the middle of the bracket. Then we just need to put a thumb screw onto each of the corners. Now 
Just before we go ahead and install our cooler, we just need to remove the fan. So if we pull off here, the fan should simply remove. Same thing with the other fan. If we just pull out here, we'll be able to remove the fan. Just before we install our cooler, we need to apply some thermal paste to our CPU. And it's good to see the Cooler Master includes some with the cooler. So all we want to do is apply a pea-sized amount of thermal paste to the center of the CPU. On the bottom of the cooler, we've got some plastic protection to remove. Then all we need to do is just lower the cooler down, lining the screws up with the bracket. Again, take care to make sure you've got the Cutter Master logo up the right way. And then all we're going to want to do is tighten the screws on both sides. So you want to tighten one screw a little bit, and then the other screw a couple of turns. And we're just going to keep repeating that process until the cooler is fully tight. Okay, so that's the cooler fully tightened. The next thing for us to do is to go ahead and get our fans back on the heatsink, but we want to make sure we do it the right way round. So this is the fan with the fan blades the right way round, and this is the one where they've been reversed. So we're going to want to put the one with the fan blades the right way round onto the right hand side of the heatsink, and the one with the fan blades reversed onto the left hand side of the heatsink. If we do it the wrong way round, it is then going to bring our from the back of the case through the cooler and then dump all the hot air into the case. Having it the correct way round, we're going to be blowing air from the front out the back of the cooler and normally there's a fan at the back of the case which is going to exhaust your hot air. The other thing to mention coming from each of the fans we've got two different connectors. We've got a standard four pin fan connector on each of the fans which is we're going to plug into a double fan splitter cable and then into our CPU fan header. We've also got an RGB connector coming from each of the fans and you can see this cable is actually quite short and if we put the fan on we might actually struggle to plug the wire that's going to connect onto this so I'm going to plug this wire in first before we put the fan onto the cooler. Okay so in the kit we're going to get this double RGB connector so each of the RGB connectors coming from the fans is going to plug into one of these headers and then we've got a standard ARGB connector one for most motherboards and one for Gigabyte, which you can plug into your motherboard. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take the connector coming from the fan and go ahead and plug it in. Then all we're going to want to do is line the fan up with the heatsink and then just push it into place. And you can see there we have no problem at all with our RAM. Okay, so same thing with our reverse flow fan at the back. First thing we're going to do is connect up the RGB. And then all we need to do is line the fan up with the heatsink and then simply push it into place. Okay, the next thing I want to do is to get our fans connected up to our CPU fan header, which is just here. We've got one CPU fan header, but we've got two fan connectors, and that's not a problem because Cooler and Master provide a double fan splitter cable. So all we need to do is plug each of the fans into the splitter cable. And then we can go ahead and line things up with the fan header. And then all we need to do is plug the other end of the cable into our CPU fan header. Okay, so the only additional wire we need to plug in is for the ARGB. And if your motherboard has an addressable ARGB header, probably the easiest way is to plug it straight into the motherboard and then use your motherboard software to control the lighting. So we've got a standard 3-pin 5-volt addressable ARGB header, which will work in most motherboards. So we've got ASRock, ASUS, and MSI labeled here, and we've got a separate one for a gigabyte. This motherboard doesn't have an addressable ARGB header, but that's no problem because Cooler Master includes a controller. So to use our controller, all we need to do is plug an additional cable into this 3-pin 5-volt header, which is used for most of the motherboards except for a gigabyte. What you'll notice, if you look at the cable, there's arrows on both sides, so we just need to line them up and then push them into place. Once things are in place, another nice feature that Cutter Master include, because these cables have a real habit of coming apart in the back of your case. For example, if you were to tug this cable for whatever reason, by mistake, quite often this comes apart and then your RGB won't work. So they include a little adapter that goes over the top and just make sure the cables don't come apart. And again, I wish other manufacturers would do something similar. So this is the mini controller that Cooter Master include. So we just need to plug this cable into this port on top of the controller. 
So this controller is going to need to be powered and we've got a SATA connector coming from it. So we just need to plug this into one of the SATA connectors coming from our power supply. And now that's everything set up. So we want to control the lighting on this. We're just going to need to press the button on the controller and we're going to then be able to cycle through all the various effects. The other thing, if you look closely at the controller, you'll notice there's two additional pins here on it. And what you can do is instead of plugging your reset cable coming from your case into your motherboard to allow it to have reset functions, you can plug it into the controller instead. Then when you press your reset button on the outside of the case, it's going to do exactly the same thing as pressing this button. So you're going to be able to control your RGB on the fans without actually opening the back of the case to access this button on the controller. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and put this motherboard into the case and once it's installed, I'll give you a look at it. So this is where I've managed to tuck our controller away. So to cycle through the different effects on the fans, all I need to do is press this button. And one of the really nice things about this controller is it is actually magnetic, so it will attach itself to the case. Um, if I had enough room, I could of course stick it here, but obviously the rear panel wouldn't go on with it. So it seems to sit in here quite nicely. And what I'll do now is I'll show you the different RGB effects. Okay, so I think you'll agree the cutter looks great, but how well does it cool? So let's take a look. So that's the thermal testing all done, and I'm pleased to say the cutter performed really well. Just before I give you the results, I want to let you know what components I've got in the system. So for the CPU, we've got the Ryzen 5 5600X, and for the graphics card, we've got the MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 3060. So with the MA612 Stealth ARGB cooler, our CPU idled at a very respectable 37 degrees, while under a 30 minute IDA64 stability test, the maximum CPU temperature was 69 degrees. So while these numbers sound pretty good, the problem with me just giving you a list of numbers is how does it actually compare to some of the other coolers out there? And actually, when Cooler Master sent me out this cooler, it was actually pretty well timed because I had just put this build together and just yesterday I had done quite a bit of thermal testing. And actually one of the coolers I tested in this case with exactly the same fan layout was Noctia's NHD15, which many people will regard as the king of our coolers. So how did this cooler perform against the Noctia NHD15? And the answer is incredibly well. So our CPU temperature, both at idle and under load, was exactly the same as what we got with Noctia's NHD15. But our GPU temperatures were actually cooler with the Cooler Master Cooler by one degree both at idle and under load. And that's actually probably due to the smaller cooler size obstructing less of the GPU airflow. As well, the Cooler Master Cooler was actually quieter by one decibel at idle and by two decibels under load. So these results are really impressive, particularly given the fact that the NHD15 has much bigger fans than the 120mm fans on the Cooler Master Cooler. So summing up on the Cooler Master Master Air MA612 Stealth ARGB Cooler, I think I can say I'm fairly impressed with this cooler. I think it's a good looking cooler. It's fairly easy to install. I particularly like the reverse flow fan on the rear and I think that significantly adds to the look of the cooler. I like the way that it doesn't obstruct the RAM. I've got nice ARGB RAM. And I know if I was to put one of the larger air coolers on, I wouldn't actually see any of my RAM. On top of all that, it's actually an incredibly good cooler. And the fact that it gives us exactly the same CPU temperatures as the NHD15 is incredibly impressive. And it even gives us better GPU temperatures. So I'm struggling hard to actually come up with any downsides to this cooler. I think maybe the only one for me would be the limitation of the ARGB effects. There was only a few of them. And the static colors didn't include white which if you follow my build guides, you'll know that's my favorite color 
to set the fans to. But that's not a big deal because you can plug it into your motherboard and then set them to whatever color or whatever effect you want. And the ARGB controller is really only meant to act as a backup if your motherboard doesn't have an ARGB header. So I think it's absolutely fine that that only has some limited effects and well done to Cooler Master for including it. So I think it's fairly clear I really like this killer and I can strongly recommend you going out and getting one. So if you've enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.